A class. In this video, we are going to continue the discussion on the general introduction. Firstly, we're going to talk about the dosage. The dosage, which also calls the usage amount. So it means the dose of a single herb applied in the clinical practice. So which means in the in a formula or in a prescription, what's the dosage you're going to use? When determine the dosage of each herb, you need to consider the property of the herbs, the application, and also the patient condition. So there's there's no one answer, no one single answer. How much or how many grains you're going to use? It will depend on the herbs. It also depends on the patient's condition. Although in the in the textbook you have the references how much or how many grains you can use. But that's, you also can adjust according to the patient's condition, according to the individual situation. You also need to think about how to ad administrate the herb. Oral taking or external application, these may affect different dose. When we talk about the contraindications, we need to think about the syndrome and the medicine, the compatibility of the medicine, the gestational medicine, the diet when taking the, herb, the, the herbs. So these are different aspects we need to think about. For example, for the syndrome and medication contraindications, Ma Huang. The property of Ma Huang, pungent and warm. Because it is warm, so it can be used for wind. Because it is pungent, pungent can disperse, so it can be used for wind cold. And it can be used for superficial excess condition, which is no sweat, difficult breathing. And then if a patient presents with superficial deficiency, such as, such as spontaneous sweating, in this condition, we don't use Ma Huang, then it will become a contraindication, spontaneous sweating, because this can in imply the patient suffer from superficial deficiency instead of superficial excess. So this, this is the syndrome and medication contraindication. The second is the gestation. The gest in this period, no matter the herbal medicine or acupuncture, special attention needs to be paid to the patient. Certain herbs or certain acupuncture points are not suggested or prohibited. So something being not suggested, if you don't have to, you don't you try not to use them. Something you are not allowed to use. So some herbs. And also we when we study the acupuncture points and the meridians, we will know that some points are prohibited or some are not suggested, not suggested in this situation. In terms of the herbal medicine, especially for the activating herbs, activating qi and blood herbs, it is these are not suggested as these may result in miscarriage. Prohibited toxic herbs and strong activating blood herbs. Are also are prohibited. So these are something we need to pay attention to. No matter with herbal medicine or with, with acupuncture points. How to administrate the herbal medicine? It will depend on different forms of the different dosage forms. Here we only introduce the one of the most common forms, decoction. Apart from the, the decoction in Chinese herbal medicine, we also have some other forms, such as the tablets, the pills, and some other external or internal administration. Caution. We're going to decop the, we're going to cook the herbs. For example, that's something you can 
see from the raw herbs when you get from the pharmacy. Raw herbs, you're going to add the herbs to a pot. What kinds of pots you can use? You can use any cooker, but do not use the one made of iron or aluminium. You're going to use the water to soak the, the herb. The amount of the, the water will depend on the, the amount of the herbs. So more or less 600 to 900 ml. You're going to soak at least 30 minutes. You can soak longer, but at least 30 minutes. After this, you soak the herbs with the same water, you're going to bring to rolling boil. You keep boiling for 10 to 15 minutes. And the water, the liquid, will be concentrated into about 200 ml. And then you fill out, that's the stuff you're going to drink. One package, one dose of the herbs can be cooked twice. So after you cook this one, it gets this 200 ml. You can add water again to this herb. You can add water to the herbs and you cook again with the same process. Normally, in, in more common situation, we will apply the herbal medicine twice a day. But also, I have to say, this is the time and when to take the decoction. It also will depend on the disease. When to take. With, and the dosage, temperature of the decoction, will depend on the diseases. For example, someone suffers from fever, we may require the patient to take the herbal medicine every few hours, for instance, three to four hours. Every three to four hours, take once. If a patient suffers from chronic condition, then we can ask the patient to take once a day or twice a day. More commonly, it's twice a day. If a patient suffers from some condition, that's mild condition, or they just take the herbs for general health, we also can advise the patient to take once a day or every second day. Temperature when, to when taking the, the decoction. Most of the time, we will, take the we will drink the decoction while the decoction is still warm. But in some situation, we will have specific requirements. For example, if a patient suffers from extremely cold condition, in this condition, we will use some hot or warm herbs. But because the patient got extremely cold body constitution, we try to balance the herbs. We will ask the patient to drink the herbs while cold. But the property of the formula, the property, the property of the decoction is hot. But the temperature when the patient drink is cold. So that can help to reduce the discomfort when taking the medicine. So these are some specific situations. Most of, so most of the condition, most commonly, twice a day, drink while the decoction is warm. When to take twice a day. In the upper part of the body, such as the problem with the head, mouth, eyes, or throat, common cold, flu, you drink after meals. Something in the lower part of the body, stomach, especially liver and kidney, you drink before meals. The last session of the general introduction. We're going to talk about the fragrance, the effect of fragrance. The fragrance refers to the smell that you can, you can smell from the herb. What kinds of effects does the fragrance have to prevent epidemic? The fragrance herbs can prevent epidemic, for instance, fragrant herb instances. You can burn the instances with the herbs. It can help to improve the immune system. That's also why, for example, the in the pandemic COVID-19, 
in some hospitals in China, they burn the mosa, the mosa stick. They create the smoke. When we use, when we study the mosa bashan in the second year, you will know that the mosa stick has a very strong fragrant smell, fragrant smell. So you can burn them. You can use this kind of smell, the fragrance, to prevent the epidemic. It also can dispel, so it's an extra L. It's bell external pathogens from superficial, such as Bo He, Xiang Ru, we have introduced in the previous slides. These herbs are from the leaves and also fragrant. So we don't we also don't cook too long. To regulate the spleen function to improve the appetite, patients suffer from poor spleen function or suffer from poor appetite. Then we can use fragrant herbs. Mushang, Cheng Xiang, Fo Song, Gan Song, Stir Fried Mai Ya, Stir Fried Gu Ya. When you stir fry, after stir fry, you also can create the fragrance. Let's create the fragrance. Dispel dampness, also one L. Ho Xiang, Pei Lan, Chang Zhu, Ho Po. These are all fragrant. Open orifice. Nose blockage, head blockage, headache, toothache, xin yi hua, bo he, bai zhi, activating qi and blood, xiang fu, wu yao, xiang ru, mo yao. Unblock orifice, unconsciousness, se xiang, yin pian, shu he xiang, an xi xiang, zhang nao. As you can see when I pronounce these different herbs, some of the herbs have the, the name of Xiang, Xiang, Huo Xiang, Xiang Fu, She Xiang, Su He Xiang, An Xi Xiang. Xiang in Mandarin means fragrant, fragrant smelling. So when you see, when you see a patient with external pathogens, a patient with spleen dysfunction or poor appetite, a patient with dampness, or blockage of, of the orifix. So you can think about the fragrant herbs that can help you to treat these kinds of situation. So these are the general introduction of the Chinese herbal medicine. In from the next video we are going to discuss some specific herbs. Thank you for your attention.